Okay, as I said, we say grace and peace to everyone so I can keep the feed moving. We are still on uh, spiritual and emotional uh, and emotional maturity. This is part two. Um, so as I looked up maturity, it's the state of being fully developed. Y'all remember that the state of being fully developed. Okay. Moving towards your adulthood. But then another one I saw it was um, the behavioral expression of emotional health and wisdom and the capacity to know one's own emotional experience and mindset will show you whether or not you are mature. And as I was saying, and I was reading at the top, the state of being fully developed uh, as an adult, I want to say some people experience a delay. Okay, some people experience a delay in maturity when they don't uh, take the steps to grow. And we did talk about some of those steps last week. We're not going to repeat them. But some people's um, maturity, their, their development is delayed when they don't take the steps, when they don't do what they need to do to help themselves to grow. We can have all these word empowerments. However, if people don't take the steps to continue to grow okay so i want to repeat just a few things we start out started out talking last week about god will god's will is for every person to experience growth and maturity as a follower of christ maturity is not based on age uh, it is not based on your appearance your achievements or your academic achievements either maturity is determined by our attitude Y'all, somebody say attitude with me right quick. Attitude. Thank you. So maturity is determined by our attitude, personal attitude. It is your attitude that impacts your character. Did y'all catch that again? It is your attitude that impacts your character. And I know she read this last Tuesday, but I needed to repeat it tonight as we're moving forward for those who are just jumping in. Without commitment to spiritual maturity in relationships or in our life as a whole, we cannot truly fulfill Christ's command, <clears throat> okay? So we have to make sure we develop maturity. Then I also want to just repeat two other things, but we didn't talk about this last week, so I need to go here. Um, and I need to go here. When we started talking about maturity and I did not give the practical study on spiritual maturity, so I need to read this because I don't think I asked her to read this. Becoming spiritually mature uh, spiritually mature is obtained by becoming Christ-like. We did talk about that. Spiritual maturity is defined as, look at this, when it comes to maturity, it's defined as being ripe, complete in growth or development. So we can say we're mature. Good to see you, daughter Afri. We can say we're mature. However, if you are not ripe, if you are not complete in your growth, and development, then you are not totally mature. Doesn't matter your age, okay? Maturity is, look at this, consistent. It's a consistent, measurable growth or development. It's a consistent, measurable growth, okay, or development. That tells me consistent means what? Continuing, <laughs> continuing, not just in word empowerment, not just on Sunday morning. It's continual. Okay, but then there was another thing that I pulled out of this. Spiritual maturity is measured by fruit rather than gifts. Did y'all hear what I just said? It's measured by fruit rather than gifts. Some people feel just because they got all of these gifts. So they think, they think their maturity is measured on that. No, it's measured on your character. And I think we talked about the character a little bit last week. We, when we look at the fruit of the spirit, we talked about that, if I'm not mistaken, a little last week. Am I correct? I can't mm -hmm. remember. Okay. So it's based on your fruit rather than your gifts. Okay. And that's in Galatians 5 and 22 and 20, through 23 for those who don't know where the fruit of the spirit is. Becoming spiritually mature, we have to make sure that we understand that these benefits uh, will complement, look at this, will only complement those who are striving to be holy or walk in holiness with complete to being spiritually mature, which means if you have not developed the fruit of the spirit, you are not complete. 
okay, in some areas. Even though we say we know the fruit of the Spirit, but are you walking in the fruit of the Spirit? Is that part of your character? Is that part of your marks in your life? <clears throat> okay, I also need to say we have to keep the flesh under subjection through fasting and prayer if we want to grow. Because your flesh is not going to want to grow. <laughs> your flesh in general is not going to want to grow. Your flesh will tell you you already mature. Okay, another thing I wanted to pull out right quick, those who are spiritually mature live in relationship with God and have grown past the point of religion. I know we didn't talk about that last week, but I needed to say that because so many, we got a lot of religious folks and they really don't know Christ, don't know nothing about Christ. Okay, uh, I think that was all of that. Now, as we're moving on to... Anybody have any comments on that? I want you all to talk back to me tonight. Anybody have any comments on anything that I just read or said? <laughs> Amen. Good to see you, Mother Forbes. <clears throat> I just saw her name pop up. Anybody want to comment on anything I just read or said? <clears throat> Please don't hold back because we probably won't do a round table tonight, okay? So I want to know what you're thinking <clears throat> as we stop and pause at different areas. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> before we move on and we're moving into develop emotional maturity, <clears throat> just want to repeat one thing that Pastor Vicki read when it comes to Webster's Dictionary. Pastor Vicki, I'm on that first page where it says know thyself. I'm not reading all of that. Webster's Dictionary defines emotional maturity as age inappropriate, look at age, inappropriate behavior and attitudes. Okay. So a lot of times people don't know that they are immature, but then they need to look at how their behavior is. Okay. Um, we have to consider whether or not we're immature in the way we respond to things we have to consider if we are immature the way we react to stuff and if you are not emotionally mature you can never be spiritually mature i know what i just said that may have been offensive to someone but i meant what i said you can never truly be spiritually mature if you are not emotionally mature if you do not agree please tell me you do not agree because if you're constantly wearing your feelings on your sleeve that means you're not emotionally mature. And if you're not emotionally mature, how can you say you mature in the spiritual aspect of your life? <clears throat> I also want to just repeat this last part, and then we're moving forward. Um, we have to make sure we understand that generally speaking, emotionally immature people <clears throat> are seen as actions being wrong. Their attitudes and their behavior is all whacked out. And they are not developed as their physical age may suggest. I say that to say this. I said last week, you can be 60, 70, and 80 years old. Okay, some of us are close to 70. <laughs> some of us already hit 70. Some have already hit 70. Those that are with us online and maybe on, uh, on, fa on, on Facebook. But it does not matter your age number. You are still emotionally immature. If your attitude has not changed, if the way you define your actions have not changed, if, you, if, if you're talking a certain way, then you are still emotionally immature and you're still spiritual immature. I know I just hit hard just then. Somebody talk to me. Tell me what you just picked up on what I just said. If you don't agree with it or it made you upset, that's okay too. But that means you are emotionally immature if you couldn't handle what I just said. Okay, talk to me, guys. Tell me what you what what you just got from what was said. Age doesn't have to. It ha, has nothing to do with it. It's all about where you are, you know, spiritually in your walk. Um, could be I guess you could be a hundred and still not be spiritually mature. It's all about um, how you want God to change you from the inside out. Amen. And then that takes me back to the fruit of the spirit. Amen. And as I said again, if you are if you are still emotionally immature, if you if if you don't keep a check on your okay, I see her hand. If you, if you don't keep a check on your emotions, then you are still 
emotionally immature and you can never be spiritually mature because as we said you can't be spiritually mature if your emotions are still jacked up now that don't mean we can't get there okay elder Merlin, will you give me a comment on something i just said <laughs> yeah i think you know how we respond to others shows is a sign of spiritual maturity um how we respond to the weaknesses and the inexperiences and even the potentially offensive things that others do to us That's is right. a sign of spiritual maturity. Spiritual I immaturity. Immaturity. Yes, okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, it it you know there's something I read once that says it matters not. You know, we have to be very careful um, when we say we're spiritually mature. Again, how we respond mm -hmm. to others. Okay, anybody else? Because if we can't get our emotions in check, and if we are still emotionally immature, as I say again, we will never be growing spiritually. And I know that's a hard pill to swallow. I know I asked you all to check yourself or ask Holy Spirit to show you where you are from last week till this week. Anybody else want to comment on anything that was just said or anything that I read? Please don't hold back. And those of you that are with us on Facebook, please feel free to comment. Anybody. As I said, I'm going to do a round robin tonight. Okay. Moving on. I uh, have to watch because certain words we cannot say. So um, how do I want to put this? I'm going to make this comment before before Pastor, I, let, I ask Pastor Vicky to read. We have to understand that the role of things that we went through in our younger life, our teenage life, or even last year, that role plays a, a, a heavy weight on our emotional immaturity. The things that has happened to you in the past plays on your emotional immaturity. And until we can grow up, and get past the emotional stuff that we went through, we can really never thrive spiritually, okay? I, I think that was one word, Pastor Vicky, that we can't call out that started with the A. So it's sad, um, but we don't want anything to kick us off, okay, guys? So I, that's why I just said anything that you've gone through in the past, whether when you were young, even up to last year, it plays that that what happened to you plays a big role in how you are mature or immature. Anybody want to comment on what I just said? Nobody. But because you guys aren't commenting, I hope you're still okay. Go ahead, uh, Janice. When you were saying about um, you know, just having past emotions, we can't allow our past to define us. You know, we have to move forward from it. We have to right. Build. And did y'all catch what she said? She said, define us. So if it's still defining us, if it's still causing us to act a certain way, then it's still defining us. That's kind of dangerous because mm -hmm. your past is yesterday. I'm not going to say let it go and get over it because we still live. But what we have to do is mature to a point that it does not cause us to react a certain way or respond a certain way. Does that make sense, guys? Anybody else want to comment? Good to see you, daughter Dana. Okay. Uh, so um, I'm going to read the first paragraph, Pastor Vic, and then you can pick up from that, okay? Because I mm -hmm. marked out a couple of words. Uh, quite often, though, not, exclusive, not exclusively, adult sometimes or adult people sometimes uh, have a hard time with emotional immaturity because they have a, this significant thing that has caused damage in their life. Um, if you can pick up reading, Pastor Vicki, there is a couple of things that I marked out um, where it says uh, the A word, the A word in childhood. Almost to the bottom you can say mistreatment <clears throat> instead of the A word. Yeah, from that, just put in life. <clears throat> okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay. This is a time of life when we are normally developing our sense of self-identity 
And in the eyes of an emotionally um, wounded child, that identity is distorted. They are crippled in their ability to know themselves well enough from a more refined perspective. And what often happens is that the person stays at the emotional age at which they experience the mistreatment. No matter what their physical age is, it creates an energetic block which can be hard to get around until that block is cleared through self growth and inner healing. So the person who has been emotionally mistreated in childhood can exhibit an inability to process difficult emotion in a mature fashion because they need to be first. They need to first be able to see clearly cognitively so as to be able to express themselves accurately and not resort to judging, blaming, or other caustic displays of unregulated emotion. Okay, stop right there. Did y'all hear what she said? It says this person, if they stay at that emotional stage with where they went through certain things, okay, then guess what? They, they have this block, so they never grow emo spiritually or emotionally, okay? <clears throat> and then the, uh, one the other thing that she said, um, um, so that person, whatever they've gone through in their life, exhibit the in inability to process difficult emotions in a mature fashion. If you think about it, how many of you have found yourself not able to process difficult emotions in a mature fashion? because emotionally we're still immature so we can't get because once you get spiritually mature then guess what you will be able to process difficult things simple things and hard things with no problem does that make sense when you become spiritually mature the way you process things are different the way you respond to something is different so as i said last week if you're still responding to things the way you responded last year, that could be that you haven't truly matured, but you should be striving to get there. Anybody want to comment on anything that was just read or said? No one? <clears throat> Michelle, you're moving your lips, but uh, but you're not, I can't hear you. So you're good? Okay. Okay, read on. Um, and I'm going to change a couple of folks' names. Okay. Why this happened is that usually when a person is mistreated, they are not allowed to say I'm hurting inside or you're hurting me. So they hide it within since displaying pain or heart, I'm sorry, pain or hurt is usually met with more mistreatment than the person that mistreated them. As often happens due to the nature of the person who mistreated them's mindset. Sometimes this hurt and pain build up a lot of suppressed anger, which when turned inward can be corrosive and destructive to the mind as well as the body. Healing emotional wounds is important for the healing of the body and soul. Stop right there. Did y'all catch that? A lot of times when we have not grown up spiritually because of our emotions, it often causes anger. It often causes bitterness it suppressed some stuff and it becomes uh, inward and then that all this corrosion co corrosiveness have to watch how we say certain things because we have to make sure we don't do any talk about anything that's health wise or we will get cut off <clears throat> so isn't it amazing when you look at spiritual people who are supposed to be especially leaders especially leaders especially ministers or elders okay bishops and apostles and pastors especially leaders as a whole, even if you don't have those titles, if you find yourself constantly uh, have this internal struggle and you're suppressing some stuff, guess what? You can get so destructive that you cause more harm to yourself, nevertheless others, and you will never grow. Does that make sense? And we have all, I'm lifting my hand, we have all caused that internal struggle, that internal pain that we have all caused that destruction in our lives because we did not know how to grow up spiritually or emotionally. Anybody want to comment? <laughs> Please talk to me. I know I'm not the only one that was almost about to self-destruct 
because I wasn't spiritually mature, I could not have been the only one. No, you're not. Okay. I um, would like to say um, a lot of times I know I can speak on me. We don't want to deal with the issue because it may be hurtful or painful. And so we do suppress that, as you were saying. And as you suppress that, you don't even realize that you're um, harboring the anger. Um, and 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 when it comes out, then you, it's, you're, you're kind of surprised by it, but it's been there the whole time. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, daughter Dina, for, for, for being honest. She said, I'm still there. But have y'all noticed a whole lot of saints are angry? A lot yeah. of the saints are bitter. I'm sorry. I, this is just what I see. I'm talking as a whole. I see this on people, the way they talk, the way they respond. And I look at folks sometimes. I'm saying to myself, wait a minute. If, if, if you at a place, amen, thank you for working to get through it, baby. That's right. Um, it's, it's just amazing to me. We are supposed, the church is supposed to be the hospital. But if the saints in the church is angry and bitter and emotionally immature, how can we teach somebody else how to be spiritually mature? Talk to me, guys. <clears throat> I think we are, in terms of the church, are very, very guilty of that, especially this day and time. And we don't want to acknowledge that we don't have the maturity to address the individual or individuals or the situation and, you know, try to find someone else who could, who could, you know, possibly be a blessing to the person that you're ministering to. But instead, we want to say, well, I'm spiritually mature enough to handle this, not knowing that we're causing, you know, a lot of, uh, division or uh, more of a catastrophe, I guess is the word I'm looking for, than truly a blessing. But um, you, you're right, I, you do see a lot more um, angrier Christians, and I don't know why, I don't know if they're harboring stuff that they have not been able to go get through or, or to get over, but we got to be uh, mature enough I'm, I'm gonna say mature enough to acknowledge that we're not there yet that we're not the right candidate or not the right person to be ministering to an individual mm. at that time especially if we've gone through something the previous day and we're still harboring over it and we're still being defensive about it and and we're still holding on to all of that we can't be a blessing to to anyone that we try to minister to so but if we are spiritually mature we're able to um i guess release all of that and and know that God, you know, God got it and just pray about it. And then maybe we can step up to be a blessing to minister to somebody else. But do you have a lot of people ministering to people and they're harboring the anger and the person that they're ministering to are not really feeling their love, you know what I'm saying? And as a result, that's why I'm saying it's, it's very, it's very destructive, um, especially if you're dealing with somebody who's truly going through something and really looking for you for some words of encouragement, but they can't get there because you're talking about your experience and your experience wasn't good and you ain't got over your experience mm -hmm. or you're not ready. You're not at that point where you're materially, uh, spiritually mature enough to share that experience. That's good. And guys, when we're talking about the church, we're not saying healing hands. We're talking about God's church as a whole. And I needed to say that, <clears throat> but I'm glad you said that because there are a lot of people that that because they feel as though they can minister to people or even mentor people, but they're not spiritually mature and they are really causing more harm to that individual. It is what it is. They're causing more harm when they think, oh, I know this. I've got the intellect for this. I got the degree for this. I got this for this. No, we've got to make sure that we get us together first. We got to make sure that we are emotionally and spiritually mature before literally before we even start trying to help minister to other folks or mentor folks. I wouldn't care whether it's the pastor, the bishop, the, the elder, evangelist, the minister, the, the leader. It don't matter. We all got to make sure before we say, I'm going to minister to this individual today and I'm going to help them. We need to give a, get a check and say, OK, Holy Spirit. Am I able to do it today? Am I able to, to minister to their need from where I am right now? And guess what? That's a mature mindset to be able to say, Lord, am I ready for this today? 
because I can I tell folks right quick if people say they want to have a counseling session with me and I think a couple of months ago <clears throat> I would say a month ago when I was going through that RSV and bronchitis physically I wasn't able to minister to individuals on a one-on-one -on -one. I had to make sure the Lord dealt with me and helped me to get physically able to be able to minister spiritually and a lot of times people think just because they they did feel like because they got a title or because they got a degree they say oh they can just do it it doesn't work like that anybody just want to come in and this and guys this topic is not to tear anybody down or make anybody feel bad but we're talking in a sense and we're making statements in a sense to make each one of us think about okay lord where am i what do i need to do <clears throat> where what do i need to do so that i can minister to that particular individual at this moment <clears throat> okay anybody want to comment on anything that was just said I, daughter cassandra i saw your face you sitting there like hmm hmm <laughs> you know how they show that expression when they're like oh okay anybody want to comment on anything that was just said or read okay thank you guys on that that are with us on facebook for commenting <clears throat> okay um uh, and and with that a word uh pastor vicky just say emotional situations okay thank you much. <laughs> okay. In these cases where emotional situations has been a major factor in the delaying of emotional maturity development, extra care and nurturing can help foster an emotional safe environment in which the person can express and process their stored up negative emotional pain and move on to healing. Once the healing has gotten sufficiently underway, then they can move on to more empowered self-growth and self-discovery. Stop there for one second. If the person wants to get help, it says extra care and nurturing can help foster an emotionally, an emotionally I'm going to say, um, immature person, but they have to be in that environment. But some people don't think, I'm going back there again, some people don't think that they need that that mature development. Some people don't think that they need that nurturing. Some people just feel as though I'm okay. Y'all haven't y'all heard that a lot? I'm okay. I'm, I say, I used to say it all the time. Oh, I'm okay. All is well before 30 years ago. I don't woke up now. Yes, all is well. But as I told one of my spiritual daughters recently, baby, it's okay to say all is well, but you need to say what's on your mind. You need to say, this is how I'm feeling, apostle. And that's okay. That doesn't mean that we don't believe or trust that God can handle it. That's not what that means. Because if you don't tell a person how you literally, how you really feeling, then we can't help you. So I had to say to that individual, baby, it's okay to say how you're feeling. That's not saying you're weak minded. That's not saying that Christ has not done anything. That's just being real. And until the saints get real with themselves, you ain't got to get real with me. You got to get real with yourself. Until the saints get real with themselves, then guess what? There won't be any emotional maturity, so there won't really be any spiritual maturity. Anybody want to comment on anything she just read or anything I just said? We're good? Okay. We'll read on. It has, it has often seemed to me that overcoming great challenges seem to strengthen the soul. Maybe that's why some of us who have chosen to climb the ascending path toward wholeness and a higher understanding of the nature of reality on a deeper level have had so many challenges to overcome. It is as if we can take the negative experiences and the energetic imprint that they leave within us and transmute that pain into peace by way of assimilating the negative or shadow parts of our being and making them whole through energetic um, energetic balancing. Isn't that something it has often seen uh, overcoming the great challenges can strengthen us. Overcoming challenges can mature us. But if we don't figure out how to overcome, um, if, if, if we cannot figure out how to overcome those challenges, then guess what? We cannot grow. Okay. 
<clears throat> so I have to be very careful. Did you get? I have to be. I have to be careful because everybody is on a different level. So I have to be careful when I say get over it because that's something I very seldom say. Now I'm not gonna say I haven't said it before because I have, but I have to be careful how I say it because I had to realize over the years everybody's not maybe on the same level that I am or somebody else. Maybe things don't trouble me as much as they trouble somebody else. Maybe I don't let a lot of things offend me as somebody else. Y'all get what I'm saying? But all of that comes with spiritual maturity. I've learned how to shake stuff off. I ain't got time to carry offenses because guess what? It only hinders me. So, but everybody's not there yet. So when we have, we have to overcome those great challenges in a way to let them strengthen us, especially if we want to climb higher, if we want to grow spiritually so that we can not just help ourselves or our families, but help those that are really in need. Anybody want to comment on anything that she just read or anything that I said? And I, I just want to say, oh, go ahead, baby. a lot of time, a lot of times, um, as you know, we're maturing and, and those, uh, tests and things come, we don't, we don't want to go through anything. And so we hold back. And that's a lot of times where the spiritual maturity is not happening because we are, we are holding back because we don't want to feel what was actually happening. You know, sometimes it may be hurt and sometimes it just may be um, you don't want anybody to know. And it's not about not wanting anybody to know what you're going through. It's about um, you taking that, like it was just said, taking that um, energy and, 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 and turning it, into positivity um and then you we all need each other to survive in this world mm -hmm. you know so you but you do have to know who to go and speak to you can't just speak to anybody oh yeah so we just have to be careful amen i tell folks you can come to me now i'm gonna show some tough love but you can come on because guess what i'm gonna show love but sometimes you have to show tough love because if sometimes you don't show tough love sometimes the person won't rise up you know, I, I can't leave you where you are. I've got to bring you up to another level of maturity so that you can be built up because I'm here to tell y'all if Satan had his way, we'd all be taught from the floor. We'd all be beat down. We'd all have a poor me attitude and that'll be just fine with him. Mm -hmm. But because we are in Christ and because of what Christ did on that cross, we don't have to stay there. We got to rest up some stuff. Guess what? Some stuff, and please don't misunderstand me, stuff, some stuff even ain't even don't even matter. Some stuff really don't matter. That's not saying that, that, that I'm saying your stuff doesn't matter to me. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying some stuff don't even, um, don't, don't even deserve our energy, our breath, and our time. That's what I'm saying. We overthink stuff. We we really do. But the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him for he care for us. Come on, take my yoke upon you. We ain't got to keep carrying stuff that that's petty. And it, the Bible talks about this just a simple affliction to God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But we blow this thing up and people don't mature because that simple affliction thing to God, we make it big. Bigger than God. When God is saying, no, just grow up, mature, get over it, and let's keep it moving. Anybody else want to comment on what was just said or read? Read or said by me or, or somebody else that has commented? Were you getting ready to say something, Pastor Vic? Nope. I was just thinking um, God is bigger than any problem that we can possibly imagine. Yes, yes. And for those that we can't see, um, that we can't see, and this is your first time with us, we only do one hour of word empowerment because we would have been on 30 minutes in prayer. <clears throat> I'm going to read this next one, becoming empowered. So when we, when, when we got to figure out how to get emotionally mature, not stay emotionally immature, we've got to become empowered. So emotional maturity is important if we are to be effective in our lives, y'all. 
not just in our lives at home or in our relationships, but even in the church. Okay, we've got to be effective in our lives. It's time out for ineffective people, especially ineffective Christians. I'm just saying, it's time out for ineffective Christians. So, um, as as we go through uh, this upward spiritual path, in a sense, we have to look first within our own immaturity, which we've already talked about, or areas in which we like to be more empowered. And you got to know how you want to be empowered, okay? You got to know what it's going to take to empower you. I, you can tell me, and then I can try to pray and ask the Lord to help me to know how to help you. But you've got to know, okay, what it's going to take and how you want to be more empowered, um, okay? And that's only if it applies to you. If you feel that you've already empowered, if you feel that you've already evolved, well, God bless you, brother and sister, because I ain't there yet. I think I can be empowered every day. I'm just saying. After we have, <clears throat> after we have been, I shifted the word from you to we because we're in this thing together. <clears throat> after we have been able to work with with our, with our own growth process, look at this. Then we are able to help another who may be struggling. Not until sometimes God, and that that doesn't mean you can't just encourage the person that's not what we're saying because if you wait to get completely mature you will never minister to anybody all i'm saying is don't take it to a level that you know you're not mature enough to be able to minister to them at that moment that's what i'm saying so um where am i at uh after you after we have uh, have been able to work with our own growth process then we are able to help another who may be struggling sometimes god god gives us uh companions, people around us, even our soulmates, our, our husbands or the wives or friends and pastors to work through uh, these struggles together. So God will give us people to help, okay? And then we can get a glimpse of, um, of reality to see how we can come out of what we're in, okay? We are all here to learn. That's why when a person, somebody told me they'll, they'll, they'll start joining back up in word empowerment after we get past this topic, I'm like, wow, okay. We are all here to learn, growing towards our higher self, okay, growing towards spiritual growth, okay, I have to add that in, therefore following the path that God has set for us, okay, and it requires maturity of our souls. So how do we recognize uh uh, spiritual immaturity or emotional immaturity and then know how to mature so anybody want to comment on what i just read or what i said because i'm shifting words on my paper because i'm trying to make sure i convey it in a way that we can understand it anybody want to comment on what was just said or read <coughs> i mean we talked about part of it before that but how many of y'all want to be empowered Mm -hmm. I ain't talking about no girl power or man power. How I many just want to be empowered in the things of God so that we can be more effective in the things of God? Yes. It's okay to say amen out loud, y'all. You can take your mute yeah. off unless you got noise behind you. <laughs> so we all want to be empowered. I ain't going through another year not empowered for purpose, which is our school of ministry, the Empower for Purpose School of Ministry. Ain't no sense in being in the school of ministry if you're not empowered. There's no sense in coming in word empowerment if you don't want to be empowered. That's our thing, word empowerment Bible study. That's why I can't just say Bible study. It's word empowerment Bible study. Amen. Anytime we're sitting in a setting, we want to be empowered. That, or else why we waste our time to join into stuff. Anybody want to comment? <laughs> Just saying. Mm -hmm. I say something, Pastor Vic. No, no. Okay. Want to say something on where you saying we are we are all here to learn, and we are here all here to learn. And when you got that mindset where you don't feel like you're teachable anymore, that you know more than anybody, that's the <coughs> wrong attitude to have. That means you're not mature at all. Because we all need, you know, more learning and more teaching to grow into maturity. That's right. That's right. No matter how long we've been in church, no matter how old we are, uh, daughter Alfreda says we have to we have to free our minds and let the rest follow. Amen. We've been stuck on that all day. 
<laughs> because we know our minds is the battlefield, amen, and the enemy plays there, and he does, and, and he does, you know, uh, he, the enemy will play that, so we have got to free our minds, we got to get past ourselves, um, and spiritual maturity is a process, uh, but I remember somebody said <clears throat> about two years ago, about two years ago, well, because I'm quick to say, we well, trust the process, but I remember telling this individual a couple of years ago, well, baby, you've been processing that part right there for a long time. And, and, and the person, he got mad with me. He was like, he was like, well, I'm just saying, I, if, if it takes me 50 years, I'm like, I sure hope not, baby. <laughs> That's what I said to him. I'm like, I sure hope not, sweetheart. Because once we, we really sit and, um, and have a teachable mindset and teachable spirit, like Janice just said, then guess what? Then we are surely going to grow and we'll be able to receive more. Okay. Um, anybody else want to come in? Now, y'all, we, y'all, they know we, we done at, at, at eight o'clock. So anybody just want to come in? It's okay. Come in. Baby. I just want to say, um, in order to move and strive, for spiritual maturity, we have to be consistent and continue in um, what God is telling us to do. And 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 these things that are had, like this word empowerment, this is a part of continuing. We got to continue to move forward. We can't continue to keep looking back on the past. Yeah, we can look back on the past to say, yeah, this is where I come from. And, and God has brought me from there you know, as a testimony, but we don't stay in those places and we have to just continue, be consistent and we have to want yes. to want it. Yes, yes. That's why I'm quick to say y'all invite people to come on, you know, not because, you know, they got situations, but because if you really believe the topics that we discuss is a blessing, then yes, invite people, you know, share it on your feed. They may not ever come to this one. However, you know, okay, it is it's 747. Let's see if we can um I think we can let's get let's see if we can get this uh, this next one right quick. It says the emotionally immature person. Okay? Start reading there. Yes, please. Um it references scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 through 13, and this is the NIV version. When I was a child, I taught like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Oh, okay. Stay right there. When I was a child. Now, I'm I'm talking figuratively speaking. However, we can say that spiritually too. He was saying, wait a minute. Even if, even if it was two years ago, I'm paraphrasing. I thought like a child. I walked like a child. I, I spoke like a child because I was immature. But after a while, as we grow, we should put away them childish behaviors. We should put away the childish mindset. We should put away the, the, the childish way of responding to things. Anybody want to comment on that scripture or what I just said? Mm, I know somebody just said, ouch, it is what it is, okay? <laughs> okay, I, I must have dropped the page. So, okay, go ahead. There's a difference between being childish and childlike. Mm. To be childlike is to have a freedom of spirit, enjoying life in a carefree energy, and to have faith that you will be able to overcome your obstacles, entrusting your path to God as you understand it. It is actually mature to allow yourself to be childlike. Isn't that ironic? That is because being childlike keeps us open spiritually and receptive to the divine path and flow of our lives. Yeah. However, childish is just the opposite. To be childish is not to take responsibility for yourself, blame everyone else for the problem that you yourself have caused, and to be resentful when people and things don't go your way. If you see the signs of immaturity in your own self or in another, do not judge. Simply acknowledge that these are the things that you need to work on, which starts with first forgiving yourself for your mistakes and then compassionately trying to understand why you are behaving in that way. Mm. 
This is a kind of self-validating experience that helps you to let go of the attachment to the old way of thinking, which is causing you problems. When we grow into kind of maturity that is required for a healthy, happy, and complete adult love relationship, we put away childish things of our youth, especially our beliefs about what a love relationship is all about. A true love relationship is a partnership and spiritual union and both adults in that partnership will find their greatest happiness with each other if they are both growing in emotional maturity. Some of the major signs of an emotional immature and the emotional mature person are listed below. And I guess we'll go over that yes. next week. I'm gonna stop right there. I won't gonna bring up the love part, but we good. <clears throat> so let's go back up there for a minute. There's a difference between being childish and childlike. <laughs> Ain't that something? Cause you know, you know, some people have childlike uh, ways, and that's not a bad thing because Christ says we all should be like a child, be like the little children. That's not what we're talking about because you can have a free spirit. There's nothing wrong with that. Have carefree energy. There's nothing wrong with that. However, <clears throat> when you say that you are mature, okay, it's okay to be childlike. However, it is not okay to be childish. I see so many childish saints, you know, or hear about so many childish saints. When you, when I, when I have my day, when I'm going through uh, Facebook, not Facebook, YouTube, and I do my channel surfing, it's amazing to me to see childish saints and i'm saying to myself what am i missing you're a leader and you acting like that so it says childish however childish is just the opposite to be childish is to not take responsibility for yourself that's to be childish when you don't take responsibility for your immaturity if you don't take responsibility for <clears throat> what you're going through instead we some people blame other folks well i'm this way because this one said that that one did that or they can't handle the truth. That's childish. Because my Bible tells me, and I think I said it to the school of ministry um, Monday night, the Bible talks about accept correction. <clears throat> you gotta get to a place and stop being childish and learn how to accept correction if it's gonna help us grow and be mature. Mm -hmm. Things of God and even in our own lives, okay? Acknowledging these things that we need to work on helps us to grow. Anybody want to, um, oh, that last part that says, when we grow into this kind of maturity, and that this, this will require us to be, it will cause us to be more healthy, not just in the church, but in our relationships as a whole. Okay, anybody want to comment on anything that was just read or said? Come on. And don't feel bad if you keep commenting, Cassandra, you got something to say, baby, you best say it. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's not an I, me, and my show. It's an our thing. Um, I It just made me think about when you said accept correction. A lot of times we can't accept correction because we feel like um, we're right. And we're not always right. Mm -hmm. um, we may feel that way, but that's not how it is. Um it makes me think about, you know, how um, rules, um, we follow rules mm. every day mm. in life. Why is it so hard for us to follow the rules spiritually, um, mm. the rules that God has set forth for us? Because no matter where we go, there are rules and regulations that we have to follow. And it's the same thing in the body of Christ. There are rules and regulations that we have to follow. Um, if we don't follow those rules in the natural world, we have to accept the correction. So right. we have to accept the correction spiritually as well. All right. Anybody else want to comment? I this? just want to piggy piggyback on what she just said. When you're working and you do something wrong, your boss is going to let you know so that you can correct it the next time you are required to do it. But as Christians, sometimes when we are approached by other Christians and told that we're doing something wrong and even quoted the scripture, which tells us that we're doing something wrong, we get attitudes and we're like, I'm grown. I could do whatever I want to do. So we got to get 
in the right mindset. And I guess we have to be spiritually mature enough to be able to receive the correction that we're receiving from the person in the church. And most of the time, the person in the church is giving it to us with love and just trying to help us overcome something that we're dealing with inside because we, you know, they want us to, they want to see us spiritually grow. They want to see us become spiritually mature, which is why they're telling us we're doing something wrong, but we got to be able to receive it with love. And we got to be able to understand that they are trying to help us and not trying to, to suppress us or, or to knock us down or keep us from moving forward. They're just, they're really trying to push us forward, but in order to push us forward, they're saying, okay, here's an area you need to, to learn and grow in so that you can be spiritually mature enough to be able to go and move towards where God is pushing you to go to. Yes, but the, in, the, the individual that feels a certain way, that's immaturity. Mm-hmm. You know, that's immaturity. So we all need to grow. And as I said, guys, this particular topic, it wasn't, it's not designed to hurt anybody's feelings. It's not designed to make someone feel bad about themselves or judge or me thinking that you're not mature. It's just when the topic was suggested, it was confirmation because the Spirit of the Lord has been saying, we all need to mature. We all need to grow. Okay, so uh, when when we come back on next Tuesday, we'll be talking about different signs. We we talked about some of the signs for spiritual maturity. So now we're going to talk about some of them for this emotional maturity and see what we can do to help ourselves to grow even more. Okay.